All right, there we are. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. Today, we have a friend of mine, and he's he's a, a, a legend. I know that you hate using that word, you know, the myth, the man, the legend, but dude, there are a few legends in our industry, and you are a current one. So first, thank you for, for making the time to be here. And second, I'm excited to ask you some questions. So can you tell us a little bit about the area you cover, how big your team is, and what that all looks like. Hey, Tristan, uh, thank you for having me on here. And, uh, you know, it's truly an honor to be able to be on here and share some of the stuff that we do here at Justin Haver Associates. We're located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yes, that's north of the American border. And uh, for those of you guys that are listening from uh, the U.S. there, uh, city of Calgary is a population of about 1.3 million people. And then we got a bunch of surrounding towns, so we have a total marketplace of about 1.5 million people. Justin Haver Associates with Remax First is a team that, uh, you know, I'm the, I don't know, figurehead, mascot, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, team leader. And uh, we consist of about 65 agents plus an additional 16 staff, might be 18 as of today as we brought two more staff on. Nice. And, uh, you know, we've been uh, so fortunate to be recognized as the number one Remax team in Canada for the last three years based on closed transactions. Uh, actually, yesterday was our seven year anniversary of being with Remax. Wow, man. I love that. Congrats. Well, three years you. in a row. That's no joke, man. Well, you know what? Uh, teamwork makes a dream work, right? And obviously, um, I can't accomplish any of this stuff if it wasn't for all the incredible staff and agents that I'm surrounded with. Dude, I, I agree with you on that. Now, on that, it also requires you to be able to have consistent amount of, of inquiries, opportunities, leads coming through. Where, where do your major ones come from and what do they look like? Do you know? Yeah, you know what? Uh, well, I got into the business about yeah, 16 years ago and I knew that one of the challenges that real estate agents had was leads and opportunities, right? So I actually, believe it or not, my very first website that I uh, built, I was advertising that in the back of a newspaper. MLS listings updated every 24 hours. I think I paid $160, was it $160 a week or a month to advertise a website in the back of uh, the newspaper. Things have progressed a little bit since then. Just Currently here in, in Calgary right now, uh, we operate uh, about 10 websites, including calgary.com that I acquired a few years ago. Um, you know, it's it, for us, it's a lot of online lead generations with uh, multiple websites. And we also do TV, radio, billboards mm. as well. Nice. And do all the leads that are coming through or opportunities, are they coming through follow-up boss or do they distribute in a different way? How does that look? You know, we used to have uh, all the agents logging into the CRM of the website before. And let me tell you, that was a bit of a gong show. Now we are very fortunate to have follow-up boss and having one central CRM which has been a game changer for us. Uh, you know, when you're running any sort of team or a business, you got to obviously have a place where you can oversee all the leads that you're generating and every lead and opportunities in a different stage. And you got to obviously, as we all know, nurture them till they're ready to act because not everybody's ready to buy yesterday or today or tomorrow when we would like them to buy, right? So having uh, all those lead sources coming into one system, um, you know, again, it gives myself that 10,000 foot overview of everything that's going on in the organization. You know, in the last 90 days, we generated, you know, 4,634 inquiry leads, right? So much like what a lot of people are, uh, you know, perhaps buying from Zillow or realtor.com down in the U.S., you know, the, these are inquiry leads, which we all know are pretty desirable when it comes to uh, converting them because they're a lot easier to convert than, you know, the typical IDX registration leads. True. Do they come directly to your website? Is that what happens? And then they say, hey, I'm interested in this property or, or what's the process? Do you know? Yeah. So the leads basically, obviously, they, we run a majority of our websites are full open. So no forced registration. So obviously if they inquire on a property, they would like to schedule a showing or request a listing uh, appointment, it goes uh, directly into the CRM. 
I like that. All right. So I was talking to Robert Slack and Gary Ashton, just like back to back from the last two weeks. Yeah. And, and your name came up a few times. They're currently working with like uh, ISAs in a group of either virtual assistants or in-house people calling a lot of these leads and a lot of these database leads. Are you doing something similar or are the leads going directly to the agents? Yeah, so I mean, all the inbound calls, when they call in, they get answered by our office staff, admin people that are obviously uh, setting the appointments and collecting all the information. And then, um, you know, we actually just recently changed up the way that we're handling all of our listing leads for the listing team, where we used to just kind of have uh, first to claim, right? Speed of response is critical, as we all know. If you uh, wait any longer than an hour, your odds of converting that lead will drastically be reduced by 300%. So, you know, speed to lead is always top priority. And um, yeah, it's first to claim for the inquirer leads. But what we have now is we actually have our listing agents on duty days, oh. which, you know, which we're finding um, it's working actually quite well because one of the things that we realize is that the agents were experiencing a lot of noise. And I mean, I think we all, experience that from these things these days where yeah. we're pinging and dinging left right and center from god who knows how many different places right. right so we were just trying to eliminate the noise so they could be more focused and uh, you know with having eight listing team specialists uh, you know they each uh, take a day and the rest of the time they can just kind of uh, focus on running their business or if they want to take time off and, you know, it gives them more flexibility like that to plan their week ahead. Now, for all the inquiry leads uh, for the buyer agents, those are all first to claim. And uh, we do work with ISAs. Now, we have a different ISA program than a lot of the, uh, the other teams. Uh, we do an intern program where we offer an ISA position to someone that is going to get licensed in the real estate industry. So while they're getting licensed, they work as an ISA which, you know, gives them the ability to get really comfortable using our CRM system, following the process, getting comfortable with the scripts and dialogue before, you know, they're out there realtoring, right? Um, wow. So it's a bit of a different model because one of the things that we have found, we've used ISAs overseas in the past and, you know, the challenge was they weren't on the ground as Gary said when uh, he was on here. Um, you know, Gary's a very good friend of mine and, you know, I've collaborated with him for many, many years and, you know, the agents are usually the best to answer any real estate questions is what we have found. And uh, that's something that Gary has been preaching for, for many years. And then we have the ISAs kind of follow up behind that to nurture some of the leads that may not have been converted or we didn't set appointments. Dude, that's a really good idea. All right. So I'm going to dig into that just for, for my benefit here for my questions. Uh, so tell me, where do you advertise for this? Do you send out blast emails saying, hey, we're hiring, but come and do an internship? How does that look? And what's expected of these interns? You know, organically, because of our brand presence in the marketplace, we attract a lot of people that are either looking at changing, you know, their real estate career up or they want to start their real estate career Um you know, so basically we would sometimes we'll have some posts on social media that will attract it or we just organically uh, attract people through our career page on justinhaver.com. And, um, you know, the expectation is for them to make a minimum six month commitment okay. to us. Right. And uh, in doing so, we will commit to training them up, giving them a job while they're getting their real estate license. And are they are they paid or are they paid in the training? How does that work? Oh, they're paid. They're paid as an employee during that time. Yeah. Oh, nice, dude. So they're, it's a paid internship that yep. then graduates in, into the team. Yep. Ooh, dude, I, I love that a lot. I love that. Great. Uh, Aaron says, great idea. Nicole says, that's what I'm doing. I love that. Yeah. You know what? Like the ISA position is pretty challenging, right? People are going to get burnout pretty quick, especially if they're doing it at a high level day after day it gets really tiring um, from what I've found, right? So to try to keep someone in there long-term could be a bit of a challenge. So this is a thing that we have done and it seems to be working quite well. I love the idea. Do you have somebody that's, 
it's there all the time to training. So you, this one person that doesn't go away. Yeah, no, we have, uh, like, I mean, I have uh, Neil, who's our training and development um, director. And he is basically, um, he was a great real estate agent. And, uh, you know, he joined our team as an agent, but he also had uh, previous experience or previous career as a school teacher. And he had a degree in computer science as well. So... You know, it was kind of uh, right under our nose. And, uh, you know, Neil has done an incredible job building out our training program and uh, also working on the systems and, you know, a lot of the automations and tweaks within Follow Up Boss to, again, enhance the um, toolbox for the agents. Because, I mean, obviously, the easier we can make it for the agents, the more successful they are. And, um, you know, the system, I mean, a lot of times we'll have agents that, you know, do some really good numbers. And, uh, you know, we ask them, what do you credit your success to? And they will say, well, one, you know, they work really hard. And two, they just follow the process. I love that, dude. I'm right. going to share. That's that's really good. I love Neil. Everybody needs a Neil, by the way. Neil or a Scott, right? <laughs> Scott Hall. That's right, man. That's right. And so here, I'm going to share your site. This is Justin's site. He covers the whole Calgary area. That's his team. Justin, I don't even know where you are in this, man. I'm right in the middle behind oh, the you, you can see uh, all of the little dogs sitting there. Oh, you have a little uh, Yorkie. Is that a yeah, Yorkie? Yeah, a little teacup Yorkie. Olive. Nice, dude. What's the name of your Yorkie? Olive is her name. Olive. Nice. I got one named Brownie. We'll share stories after. <laughs> Well, all right. Olive is actually my girlfriend's dog. Oh, right? damn, dude. I think Olive has uh, stolen her boyfriend. There you go. That's funny. That's funny. All right. Tell me about your website and the the leads that come through here. Who built your website and, and where do you get your leads from? Yeah. So a lot of my websites are with Real Estate Webmasters. This one here is a custom template. It took me about two years to build this with Real Estate Webmasters. Uh, one of the great things with Real Estate Webmasters is you can customize and do pretty much anything that you want. It is uh, pretty costly, to say the least, if you want to customize stuff. But it is also one of the things that allows you to be pretty creative. You know, um, a few years ago, we did a massive upgrade where I really built out a robust API uh, that I customized, obviously, because I wanted to have all the websites communicate directly with uh, follow-up boss. Got it. So all of the leads dump into follow-up boss, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the amazing thing with follow-up boss, and I mean, before when I didn't have follow-up boss and when each team member would have their own profile on the back of each website, uh -huh. you would have some of the agents fighting over leads because we all know the typical buyer doesn't just sign up on one website. They visit, you know, typically in and around five different websites, right? So you'd have one agent saying, well, this is my lead. And the other one were like, well, it's my lead. It's in back in on this website. <laughs> Not like they were meeting at uh, the bike racks or anything like that, but, you know, it created some, some challenging moments because there was a little bit of entitlement to the leads. However, you know, the buyer will work with who they want to work with. So now having, you know, all these websites in the marketplace and having one CRM, the agent that has the lead will get notified if that uh, lead signs up on a different website. So you I love that. that. I love that, dude. So you put a lot of effort into, into your website. And I love seeing that because when we talk to all of the mega agents that we bring on, they put a lot of emphasis in building out their websites, like Jenny Weimer out of Florida as well. It's like eventually everybody wants to move out of paying for leads, right? Yeah, and that's something that I started doing it very early on in my career was investing into search engine optimization, right? Um, I've gone through many different vendors over the years. I've wasted tons of money hiring the wrong people to do SEO. Some might as well have just been driving down the highway, throwing tens of thousands of dollars out the window. <laughs> right? I would be driving right behind you, picking it up. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you the SEO expert? Uh, uh, no, I'm not. But that sounds fun, dude. That yeah. sounds fun. <laughs> but, but you know what? It, it's the beautiful part about SEO. I mean, it's a long-term game. And I think a lot of people quit too soon because they don't see the results. 
And I mean, you know, organic traffic is amazing. But at the same time, if you want to shut down for the holidays, you can't, right? Like with PPC, you can, you know, you want to take a week off or if everybody's busy, um, you know, you can shut that off and you're okay. But with organic traffic, especially the kind of traffic that we're getting, you know, um, around 800,000 plus organic visitors a month. Dude, which, that is insane. Yeah, now if you were to convert that into PPC, that's a pretty significant uh, Google AdWords spend per month if you were to replicate it. So, you know, it's uh, something that has benefited us immensely. And I mean, this year we've been uh, just trying to keep up with all the inquiries because our web traffic just uh, shot through the roof. And, uh, you know, we're sitting at over 415 million year to date. Dude, that's, that's insane, man. Good job. Good job on that. So, well, it's a good job to all the agents and staff on the team, right? I mean, uh, you know, as we've all experienced a pretty crazy uh, real estate market. I mean, Calgary for the last six years has actually been struggling quite a bit. We're tied directly to the energy markets, right? Being an oil and gas town and uh, our energy sector has definitely been struggling. And, um, you know, it's kind of nice to have a, a seller's market for once. That makes, dude, that makes all the difference, right? A couple of questions, a few questions for you. Uh, can you repeat how many people are on your team again? So 65 agents plus and 18 staff. 18 staff. All right, there we go. Perfect. Teddy Teddy jumped in and, and wrote that in there. All right, so question, Casey's asking, is there a bonus structure for the ISAs? No. No, all right, good. Perfect. And Sean's asking, what's the best way to enhance our SEO without making the costly mistakes that you experience? Any tips on that? Well, what I would say is you got to hire the right company. Um, you know, make sure that you ask for references, get references uh, of people that the company has worked with for the last, you know, several years, because you want to see obviously that they have a proven track record. Ideally, they would want to work with other real estate companies. Uh, and or agents and have success with uh, their rankings. Where were they when they first started working with them? Where are they now? Can they share Google Analytics? If they say, oh, we can't share that because of client confidentiality, I would say red flag. Dude, it was such a great point. You know what? It reminds me that, that um, I probably would say the same thing, but when you brought up that they can't share things, that is a massive red flag. And that's from failure. So <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what, another thing that I think a lot of real estate agents don't do as well is they don't treat their business like a business. Right. Um, I've always been big on market exclusivity, especially if you're going to be pouring a ton of marketing dollars into your marketing. I hope they're not doing that for the competition that you're competing against. The only one that benefits yeah. from that is the vendor, not you, the agent, right? Um, I was speaking with one company several years ago and they had multiple clients in the marketplace. And I'm like, okay, so you guys are going to be running a, let's say a, a PPC campaign for those agents as well. We're technically, technically going to be competing against each other. And they're managing all those clients that are or like trying to outbeat each other for the uh, ad placement, right? So, you know, we got to be smart about it. Uh, market exclusivity, again, like I said, is huge, especially if you're going to be doing um, some big spend on marketing and branding. Um, I agree you know, there. The company that we use, I mean, we use the same one that uh, Gary Ashen uses, uh, Tony Gilbert with Hypewired. You know, uh, he does a phenomenal job for us and, uh, you know, but he's also very, very selective on the clients that he takes on. And, you know, you got to be prepared to uh, be committed long term. I love that. All right. A couple of more questions for you. Uh, somebody said, Tony. oh, Gary's listening. Ah, Gary, of course. What's up, Gary? How's it Gary, going, Gary? Gary, at least Gary is not trolling you. So that's good. Uh, Gary oh, says, but you, know, you know what? Like, I'm going to tell you this. Like, I met Gary at a, at a real estate conference back in 2012. And that was one of the pivotal moments for my business. We were sitting around a table chatting about how many leads we were generating. And uh, I was down in Miami. And uh, 
you know, I told him at the time I was generating about 150 registration leads a day. And he asked me how many agents I had and at the time. It was like five agents. Gary looks at me and he's like, you need a hundred agents, Justin. And I'm like, what are you smoking? <laughs> That's crazy number. Right. But he said, you know, and again, I, I want you guys to take away from this. Cause I think this, this is actually something that is very, very applicable to our industry. A third of the agents, will be available to take on new opportunities. One third of the agents will be able to, um, you know, well, they have their plate folders working with the clients and the other third are out there spending the money, enjoying life, going on vacations, that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty accurate formula that I can uh, still witness nine years later. That's such a great point, man. That's, that's great advice. That's, that's very good advice. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for being on, Gary. Thanks for encouraging Justin, too. Yeah, no, Gary's a great guy, and obviously he runs a great operation uh, down there in Nashville, being the number one, you know, REMAX team in the, how does it go, Gary? World? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know what? Follow up, Osto. I mean, I think that, you know, as a team leader, some of the challenges that we have is holding people accountable. And, you know, when we're spending as much money as we are on generating leads and opportunities and essentially taking away the risk for the agents that are on the team. So all they have to do is just focus on what they're good at. And that is, you know, building rapport with all these opportunities, following a process, right? With the follow-up, how many contact attempts are you doing, right? The average agent in our industry, I think uh, the average contact attempts per lead is something like 1.2. And Which is absolutely terrible. We and we all know that eighty percent of the sales happen in contact attempt six to twelve. Dude. Right, we have some agents on the team that were averaging 20, 20 plus contact attempts per lead in twenty twenty. All right, so look with that. Tell me about when a lead goes into follow up boss, regardless of where it comes from. What's that process look like? Does it? automatically get sent to your ISA and then depending on that conversation they start on a drip or what does that what does that look like on follow-up boss so because they're inquiries someone that wants to see a place it goes directly to the agent okay right so the agent is then uh, they have to call the lead if they can't get a hold of them on the phone they text them if they can't get a hold of them there they send them an email Ideally, they also send my video, right? Okay. And then we have a certain sequence of number of contact attempts, um, you know, if they were unable to set an appointment or connect with them, right? It, it's all a numbers game, uh, really. Oh, got it. So if they're inquiring about a property, it goes to the agent. Yep. If they're just coming in and they're just looking at homes, then it goes to the ISA at that point? If, yeah, if they actually, we, that's where we use a combination of AI and ISA. Because we also use AI that's uh, with Ylocal as well, which is uh, a pretty um, cool little feature that they have. Yeah. And some interesting conversation that the AI bot will have sometimes, but it's actually a really good conversation. And people think it's actually a real person. So we use the ISAs in combination with the AI, which uh, works really well. And then that's with all the IDX registration leads, because we still get a few of those here and there. Um, but you know, for the most part, all the inquiry leads or, uh, seller leads go directly to the agents. I like that. All right. So you did answer that question, buddy. All right. We got about five minutes left. I have some questions for you. What, what are you most proud of for the team that you currently have right now? What, what you look at and be like, you know what, that's super cool. I'm really, I'm really happy that, that we've done or achieved this. You know, um, it has been such a crazy journey to really think about it from where, you know, I started my career to where it is to, today, um, you know, but having a kind of a hybrid team model where it allows you to have agents of 19, 25 years experience join up on your team. Even the agent that used to be my agent before I got into the business and who was my mentor when I got into the business, he's on the team. You know, we have another agent on the team, 19 years experience. He used to be a team leader. Um, we also have, uh, 
you know, newer agents. And what I'm most proud of is, you know, the environment and the culture where everyone supports one another. How often do you see agents hand off leads to one another with nothing expected in return? Yeah, I love that. And at the same time, you know, with the training and development, I can put a brand new agent into our system with the training. And, you know, we have now two agents here coming up on one year. Both of them have sold over 40 homes with glowing five-star reviews, left, right, and center from the clients. Mm -hmm. So you got to sit there and think, okay, how is that? How is that repeated over and over again? And that I think is because one, we're really good at selecting the right people, mm -hmm. setting the right expectations when we bring them on board and ensuring that we also have people that are committed to following the process because we set the clear expectations when we hired them and their willingness to constantly strive to be better. I love that, dude. There's a, there's a question that I'm answering separately. Sean, I got your question. He answered it earlier. I'm just going to send you a link. So then my second question, Justin, is what are you currently working on that you're like, ooh, damn, we're missing the boat on that one, or I'm not too happy on this. What, what are you working on there? Uh, there's always improvements to be made, right? So um, what we're working on is just more of an organizational structure, uh, ensuring that we have the right people in the right positions to support the agents. You know, myself, the entire leadership team, the admin staff, the marketing team, we're all here to support the agents for them to have a successful business. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we're kind of working on now is more of the organizational structure to ensure that we yeah, have the right people in the right roles. Because sometimes, you know, we can put the wrong person in the wrong role and it doesn't work the way we want it to because the person may not have, uh, you know, the personality where they pay attention to the details because it's a detail-oriented position, right? Yeah. So just really diving into that, um, continuing to obviously grow and look for opportunities in the marketplace. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the market is forever changing, right? So we got to make sure that True. we're ready to pivot. You know, we were all chatting back in March of last year and everybody was going, oh crap. What's yeah, they weren't happen? sure what was going to happen, right? I know, right? And, and you know what? Like we all sat in fear, let's be honest. Going like, how is this going to pan out? Like everybody's being told to stay at home and who would have thought that uh, the real estate market would have uh, taken off the way it did? Yeah, this hot, man, this hot. All right, last question for you here. When when people, agents here, agents are looking to scale and they know they need more more agents, like, uh, like Gary Ashton says, just get a, a lot more agents. You got a lot of leads. Who do you hire? Typically, what would you say? In what order would your staff, what would that look like? You know, it's a question that I get asked quite often, you know, even from like brand new agents that want to start a team. First thing I say is, okay, what kind of business do you do yourself, right? Because I think first and foremost, if you're going to bring anyone on, you need to ensure that you have enough business to support yourself and it has to be able to support whoever else you bring on board, right? So if you have a lot of leads and you are running Mach 10, I mean, I think the first hire should be an assistant, right? And then build out your team from there. But you got to have all your systems and processes in place. Like even if you get follow-up boss, follow-up boss is just a, a shell. Then you got to obviously systemize it so it works the way that you do business. That's true. So you got to build out your systems and processes and have every single step of your business laid out. Then yeah. um, as you bring on agents, you obviously got to invest your time into training them. And if you say, oh, that agent didn't work out, well, you might have to look in the mirror and say, okay, how was, how did I train that person? How committed was I to training them? Because if someone really fails, it's your responsibility. And that's one of the things too, that I'm learning as, you know, being a leader of this team, it's about personal responsibility, essentially as a team leader, everything that goes good in the organization uh, is because of obviously the people that you've surrounded yourself with. If anything goes wrong in the organization, that's your responsibility because whether it's agents or staff, you hire them. That's right, dude. 
Good answer, man. And look, all of you who are wondering if this is recorded, I got a few questions. This is recorded. I put up the link there. It's going to go into the Follow Up Boss community for YouTube. So just subscribe there. I put the link there on the chat box. And Justin, thank you so much, man. Are you currently hiring people just in case? Um, I had two people inquire and say, are you hiring? We're always hiring great people. I love it. How do we, we have plenty of opportunities for anyone that wants to uh, you know, join our team here in Calgary. Uh, just go to justinhower.com forward slash careers.php and uh, you know, let's have a conversation. But yeah, always looking for great people. I love it. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Thank for, you for having me on here. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Take care.